So DC PCSB has had four executive directors since our creation, two of them being us. Joe, as the first black woman to lead this organization, what did you envision for DC public charter schools and the students and the families they serve? Well, I think that one of the things that I was particularly interested in was, was excellence and equity for those children in DC. And if you kind of remember my, my personality at the time of the beginning, we had to be very vigilant and very um, combative almost in many instances in order to, um, to move forward with what we considered our goals. I think it's important that as the executive, before I was the executive director, I was for more than a year the chair of the board and uh, so had a responsibility there to help with the development of what, what we as a board felt, because it wasn't just me I, individually without a good board, there would not have been much that could have been done. But so I have to give credit for the board for having the vision and the, the real gut to want to do well by children in the Washington DC school system or in, who lived in Washington DC who might choose charter schools. One thing we all know that you certainly know and I know is that charter schools were a choice that parents had to make, they, they could make. They didn't have to make that choice. They could stay where they were if they were satisfied, but they this provided them with a choice. So uh, I think that what was one of the things that we really envisioned that was that there would be a way that any parent who was interested in making a choice could make that choice. And that required uh, a lot of planning. It required a lot of fighting in a way of, uh, you know, intellectual fighting and territory fighting. And uh, it was not a, it was not a pleasant time for those of us who were trying to make charter schools uh, become a reality because it, when, when I started, it was not, it was just an idea. It was still an idea. We had very few charter schools nationally. There were no models. So uh, how do you do this without a model or without some examples? And so uh, it was, it was, it was challenging, and uh, and uh, I always felt very good about the fact that uh, the DC Public Charter School Board, the board members at that time, we had that one vision uh, together, and I think that's what made the difference in our being able to to begin to do some of the things. And you see the results uh, over these years since 2011. Not that everything has been perfect, not that everything is still working, but then there are human beings involved, and human beings don't have perfection, so. Uh, you, you you keep trying to fix it, and that's that's. But if you have the right attitude about what it is you're fixing, I think then that can make a difference in 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 how well you serve. Absolutely, I really appreciate um, what you said, and certainly resonate with the notion of excellence and equity. And as you may know, that features prominently in our current strategic roadmap. And I would probably say that that. Um, sort of emanates from your background. We know that your background in education started as a DC public school educator. Can you tell us how your experience in the classroom shaped the way that you led the DC Public Charter School Board? Well, let me backtrack and say that my attitudes and ideas about teaching really began before I became a teacher. Uh, I tell the story often with a chuckle that when I was a university student, the one thing I had decided I was not going to do was teach. Then I married, I had kids, and that's where my, my real interest in education began because I had three children, and as they were moving on towards school, uh, I had an interest in, well, how are they going to be taught? What are they going to learn? What is my role? And as I, begot, as I began to get into that role, uh, I began to become more active uh, in the community of education and decided to go back and get, I was not an education major. I, I, I could not stand all of those courses that already, <laughs> told me, already told me what I thought I already knew. And so uh, that I, I was a sociology major. If I don't understand how, how people work and a psych minor, then, then educate, it was just too much repetition. And so I, I stayed with my major and I subsequently did whatever I had to do. And they were in need of teachers at that time. And so you could convert with very little extra courses and so I did and actually substitute my sister that was the teacher and she I enjoyed subbing and she said you know if you enjoy subbing then then teaching will be, be easy 
because you get a different group of kids, you get their, all those challenges that children bring to you when they think the sub doesn't know what to do. So, uh, so that's sort of how I moved into actually teaching. And then to get to your question, how does that background, the whole idea of the fact that I was in the classroom for 25 years, uh, working with children, realizing, first of all, that there's no, there are no carbon copies. They're all individuals. They're all different. Um, every school is different. Every, every administrator is different. Uh, that you, and that charter schools, in my mind, uh, provided the opportunity uh, to be a lot more open with how people uh, can, can go uh, in the direction that they find. Because